welcome to the TDTV channel. Like and subscribe to support us. For the first time during the war, Russia has simultaneously fired six Kinjal missiles at Ukraine. On March 9th, during another mass rocket attack, the Russian Federation has used Kinjal missiles against Ukraine for the first time. This was announced by Yuri Igne, a spokesman for the Ukrainian Air Force. Yuri Ignat revealed this during a national telethon. He emphasized that this time, the enemy used a significant range of their weapons, including missiles that Ukrainian air defense systems cannot yet shoot down. Among the missiles that Ukraine cannot yet shoot down are the Ballistic Trajectory Guided Weapon S-300 and the Air Ballistic Missile Kinjal. Six of the latter were launched on 9 March. In connection with this, Yuri Ignat emphasized the need to pay attention to air alarms that are announced due to the takeoff of the MIG-31. This aircraft is a carrier of Kins Halls. Ignat also emphasized that today's attack cannot indicate a certain change in tactics, as Russia has been striking from different directions since the beginning of the war among the current targets, it is believed are primarily civilian infrastructure objects. Russia's unbeatable Kinzhal hypersonic missile compared to U.S. high-mobility artillery rocket systems. Russia's launch of six hypersonic missiles has caused trepidation on behalf of Ukrainian officials who have admitted their military lacks sufficient air defense systems. The six Kinzhal or dagger missiles were part of an overall 81 missile barrage Thursday that resulted in at least five civilian deaths. The Russian Defense Ministry has taken responsibility for the assault, referring to it as a retaliatory strike in response to Ukrainian attacks in the Bryansk region. This is an attack like I don't remember seeing before. Yuri Ignat, a spokesman for the Air Force Command of Ukraine, said on Ukrainian state television Thursday morning, So far, we have no capabilities to counter these weapons. There may be at least one option, however, according to the STRATCOM Center, which was established under the Ukraine Ministry of Culture and Information Policy. The American Patriot Air Defense System is capable of intercepting ballistic missiles, the center said. That is why it is so important that this air defense system arrives in Ukraine as soon as possible. Kinzhal versus high mobility artillery rocket systems. The KH 47M2 Kinzhal, also known by its NATO label Killjoy, is a hypersonic air launched ballistic missile capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. The 8 meter long missile, about 26 feet, can carry a payload of up to 480 gi, just over 1,000 pounds, and has a range of up to around 1250 miles, according to the Center for Strategic and International Studies think tank based in the U.S. It is designed to be launched from MIG-31 fighter jets and is thought to be a modified version of an Iskander M-ground launched missile. Russian state television host Vladimir Solovyov previously boasted in a broadcast that the Kins Hall missiles could reach London in nine minutes after a potential launch from Belarus. The Kins Hall is the lead of a new generation of Russian superweapons, which were developed specifically as a counter to improved U.S. anti-missile defenses, said military and technology expert David Hambling. Russian news agency TASS reported, Back in 2018, Russian President Vladimir Putin lauded the Kinzhales as giving serious advantages in the sphere of the armed struggle. David Hambling told Newsweek, It is extremely difficult to intercept because of its ability to maneuver at hypersonic speeds. This is its advantage over fast but predictable ballistic missiles and the slower, agile cruise missiles. John Arith, senior policy director at the Center for Arms Control and Nonproliferation, told Newsweek that it remains speculative whether the Patriot system could adequately defend Ukrainian airspace. 
Kinzhal missiles fly at a fast speed and are more difficult to shoot down compared to typical cruise missiles, he added. But it presents a double-edged sword for Russian forces because power comes at the cost of accuracy. Era said if they want to hit targets in Ukraine, they either don't use these missiles or they have to slow these down because it ruins their advantage, while that diminishes the missile's chances of successfully targeting infrastructure. For example, he said Russia could use them in a terror role to kill civilians and cause general destruction Aside from Patriot systems, which were approved by the U.S. in December to be sent to Ukraine, high-mobility artillery rocket systems have been a major part of Ukraine's repertoire for much of the duration of the ongoing conflict. The U.S. began sending high-mobility artillery rocket systems to Ukraine's forces last summer, and as of March 3 of this year has sent 38 HIMARS-plus ammunition, according to Defense Department records. The M142 high-mobility artillery rocket systems made by U.S. defense manufacturer Lockheed Martin are advanced wheel-mounted, multiple rocket launchers capable of firing several precision rockets on targets up to around 40 miles away. They can rapidly mass fire from a distance, said U.S. Army V Corp Commander Lieutenant General John Kolesheski adding that they offer an operational advantage over an adversary and is critical during large-scale ground combat. They are mainly artillery systems used for attacks rather than defense, Arif noted. The U.S. Army has begun offering high-mobility artillery rocket systems training to NATO allies. On Thursday, the State Department announced it had approved the proposed sale of high-mobility artillery rocket systems launchers, and related equipment to the Netherlands worth an estimated $670 million. It must first be approved by Congress. Security Service of Ukraine neutralized Russian Tor M2 and S-300 BM air defense systems. According to mil.in.ua, Ukrainian special forces neutralized Russian Torm-2 and S-300 VM air defense systems. Footage of the enemy's equipment was released by the Security Service of Ukraine. The special service said that Russian systems destroyed drones with explosives. The SSU said SSU commandos destroyed Russian Torm-2 and S-300 VM air defense systems with kamikaze drones it is worth noting that the SC-300 VM rarely gets on Ukrainian forces video from the front line. The S-300 VM anti-2500 is the result of a deep modernization of the S-300 of air defense system. Anti-2500 mobile universal air defense system belongs to the new generation of Russian systems. It is designed to protect important state, military, and industrial facilities, groups of troops from ballistic and aerodynamic types of air attacks. The S-300VM uses new anti-aircraft guided missiles with extended ranges. The SC-300V air defense system includes a command post, radar, a multi-channel missile guidance station, and launchers. However, Russian Torm-2 anti-aircraft missile systems quite often fall under the attack of the Ukrainian military. Last month, Ukrainian artillery managed to damage the position of the Torm-2 anti-aircraft missile system. In February in the Kherson region, the armed forces of Ukraine also destroyed two rare torm twid anti-aircraft systems versions modernized for Arctic climate. The Ukrainian Air Force also uses American anti-radar missiles AGM-88 to defeat Russian TOR systems. A shield with anti-aircraft defense and anti-missile defense will not protect the sky. The expert told what to do. According to the expert, the Patriot systems will not be able to fully protect the entire territory of Kiev from the enemy's ballistic missiles. The creation of a large shield from air defense and anti-missile systems will not completely protect against Russian attacks. Instead, it is necessary to destroy missile carriers and the enemy who will launch them. This opinion was expressed by the military expert Pavlo Narozhnyi, 24 Channel reports. 
he noted that Russia has a sufficient number of weapons in warehouses and it can continue to produce new missiles. In addition, the Russian Federation has S-300 and S-400 and S-400 missile systems that can be used for attacks on Kivi from the Bryansk region. According to Narozny, enemy missile strikes may continue. Now we can't do anything about it until the Patriots are deployed. Until we repel the enemy from the frontline cities, the threat remains, the expert noted. According to him, the Patriot systems can protect against conventional targets at a distance of 180 chem, while against ballistic missiles at a distance of 40 chem. We will not be able to protect the entire territory of Kiev against ballistic missiles, let alone talk about other cities. Eight systems will be handed over to us. For comparison, rich Japan has more than 200 systems available, but they do not have the entire territory protected, Narozny said. He emphasized that the logic of all anti-aircraft and anti-missile defense systems is not aimed at creating a huge shield. We must destroy missiles, missile carriers, and the enemy who will launch them, the expert said. According to TSN.UA sources in the government, the first Patriot systems should arrive in Ukraine after April. In addition, the state will receive two IRIS-2 complexes in the near future. As noted in the White House, Patriot systems will not help Ukraine fight against Russian cruise missiles and drones because they are designed to intercept ballistic missiles. Kremlin cuts off Wagner's direct access. According to the Moscow Times, the head of Russia's notorious Wagner mercenary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, said on Thursday that he'd been cut off from all government communication channels following his recent public plea to the Ministry of Defense to supply his fighters in Ukraine with urgently needed ammunition. Prigozhin said in a message posted in order to stop me from asking for ammunition. They turned off all special uh, government phone lines in all of the offices and blocked all of the offices and blocked all of my units and blocked all my mad passes to the agencies responsible for making decisions on his Telegram channel. Prigozhin made headlines last month when he accused Russia's top brass of committing treason by intentionally depriving his fighters in eastern Ukraine of ammunition supplies. He subsequently called on ordinary Russians to help him put pressure on the country's regular army to share their supplies of ammunition with Wagner mercenaries. Though Prigozhin subsequently announced that ammunition shipments to Wagner had resumed in his Thursday message, he revealed that the ammunition shortage situation hadn't, in fact, seen much improvement. He said, now I can only ask you for more supplies through the media and most likely will be doing just that. A close ally of Vladimir Putin, Prigozhin, has been engaged in a public standoff with Russian military officials for months now, accusing them of taking credit for victories won by Wagner fighters and of slowing down the advance of Wagner units in Ukraine with red tape. According to SU, the Wagner Group's offensive operation in eastern Bakhmut appears to have entered a temporary tactical pause and it remains unclear if Wagner fighters will retain their operational preponderance in future Russian offensives in the city. There have been no reports of Wagner fighters conducting offensive operations from eastern Bakhmut into central parts of the city since Russian forces captured all of eastern Bakhmut located east of the Bakhmut located east of the Bakhmutka River on March 7. Wagner fighters have been conducting highly attritional frontal assaults on eastern Bakhmut for nine months and are likely not prepared to conduct a crossing of the Bakhmutka River to the Bakhmut city center at this time. The frontal offensive on eastern Bakhmut likely consumed a significant amount of Wagner personnel and resources. Although it is not yet evident whether this effort has caused Wagner's offensive within Bakhmut itself to culminate. Ukrainian Eastern Grouping of Forces spokesperson Serhai Cherevati stated on March 9 that an increasing number of unspecified Russian airborne and mechanized reinforcements have recently arrived at Bakhmut. 
The arrival of an increased number of conventional Russian forces to the area may suggest that Russian forces intend to offset the possible culmination of Wagner's offensive operations in Bakhmut with new conventional troops. Wagner Group fighters may also be conducting a temporary tactical pause to wait for these conventional Russian reinforcements and replenish themselves in preparation for costly operations within central Bakhmut. Thank you for tuning in to our video. Make sure to check out our future videos on the TV news by subscribing and turning on notifications with the bell icon. We'll catch you at the next one.